The first step to this conversion, whether you buy a 9712 Traxxas kit on painted or whether you're using your own pre-painted body, you're going to have to remove these windows. I found the easiest way to do that is to grab a hold of them just like this, pinch the bottom side of the window so you slide it just past here. And that goes to the other side as well, and it'll fall free all the way across. You can just push it right out. The tools I like to use for this, first and foremost for cutting the bodies, get yourself a retractable box cutter with brand new sharp blades on it. You could use an X-Acto knife, however I find their blades aren't quite as robust as a, a box cutter blade. Um, you could use a Dremel or some sort of rotary tool like that, however when you start cutting off these edges it ends up leaving them a lot rougher and much, much rougher for the doors, things to that nature. Uh, these bodies will actually, when you score them, they'll actually snap and break, which makes disassembly uh, very easy and leaves you know, clean edges. So get yourself a box, box cutter, uh, a couple sheets, uh, or one sheet really of 220 sandpaper, something with a square edge so that you can sand the smaller items, and then definitely one part folded over for uh, corners and things of that nature. A, a little pair of side cutters or something and a plier is not a bad idea, and you'll, you'll see why a little bit later on in the time lapse. For cutting the bodies, I've uh, marked some lines on here. What you're going to be looking for is the door shut line right behind the rear door here just in between these, this ridge and the window frame as I've outlined here and we'll be cutting right here by this D-pillar and then on the back side of it we'll be trimming this door hinge off till it's flush marking the same similar line right there and then what we'll do is we'll, we will draw a tape line across this ridge right here just about a millimeter above this hole and we'll trim that off and that same goes for the other side. All the way up it, along this ridge, just before this D-pillar on either side. Now for the roof I've also outlined in blue what we'll be trimming or cutting off as we don't need it anymore. All these little tabs and then as well as the front pins that go through the windshield you won't need those as, uh, anymore and it just hinders uh, hinders your application further on so we're going to cut all those off just flush with the roof line and then we're going to flip it over or I've outlined in blue here there's a seam that runs all the way across in between these first two sets of rivets and we're going to trim score all the way across there and then we'll score it on the back side and we'll actually snap it and then the the back side of the roof, what we'll do is once we get that scored, it should be just behind the B pillar here. We'll mark that. We'll move this part of the roof up so it won't pay too much attention where I've got that blue line now. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll get it to where it's lined up on the back side of it when we move that D pillar forward. And then we'll mark it here and we'll draw a tape line across here as well so we get a nice even line and we'll trim score that once again flip it inside out we'll score the inside of that and we'll snap that and then it'll be sanding and finishing from there on out all right so now that we've got an idea of where we're cutting and where we're cutting on our roof we'll go into a time lapse and we'll just uh speed that up a bit
All right, so now that we've cut off the excess parts we don't need anymore, our next step is going to be to trim and sand inside of these doors, as well as the rest of this body. Just trying to get all the excess off so that we can sand it flat and flush further a little bit later on here. And then for this, we're going to be trimming the outsides off here where I've marked in blue so that this edge is flat. So let's put that on a timeline. All right, now that all of our cutting and sanding for the back side of the cab is done, we've sanded it till it's nice and square. What we're looking for is this roof line to be completely flush. So now we can go ahead and glue it. For gluing it, I like using this Loctite Super Glue Gel, Ultra Gel Control. Works out pretty well, stays where it's supposed to be. All right, now on to my least favorite part. Let's cut this roof apart. All right, so the front's pretty straightforward. Follow that ridge all the way across. You should have these holes will obviously still line up. And you can see we've we've got a slight cant off to the right here, so we'll have to trim that down till it's square. So what we'll do is we'll do some more sanding on this, and then what we'll do after that, after we get that part square, is we'll mark where this part ends here. And we'll kind of line it up, just give it a hair, hair of overhang on this side. And then we'll mark over here and draw that tape line and move on from there. All right, so just off of that, man, we got it really close. It may not look like it, but we're just a little bit of sanding away. So don't be too worried about cutting it the first time. See, like we've got a little gap in between there. Don't be too worried about cutting it because now all of this is going to be finish work using our flat surface and some sandpaper. I like using 220. Gives you a pretty decent little edge on there. Helps the glue adhere to it. It also cleans up a lot of these rough spots and anything after that we'll follow up with some 400 uh, but our goal is <clears throat> to get this pretty close with all this stuff lining up make sure these are nice clean no gaps having and then this on this side over here we're going to be looking for this roof line to match up with this now our C pillar
All right, so I'm really liking the way that turned out. So the only things we've got left to do to this, and you can go as far with this as you want, but I like to give this a little sand to keep that door line in there, and also sand off with at least 400 grit, any of the excess that's on there. Make sure you don't leave any super glue around these edges. I'll give that little area a nice little sand too. So I'll skip through most of this. The next step we're going to be doing is putting our tonneau cover on. And in future videos, we're going to do a uh, drop-in 3D printed bed as well. Uh, but for the purpose of this assembly video, we're just going to do a, a flat tonneau cover. Alright, so now grab you some 220 sandpaper, or finer grit, but I find 220 works the best for this, just like everything else on these plastic trucks, and grab something that is semi-square, this is a 3D printed battery holder for a DeWalt battery that I'm not using, that works out great for this, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to sand this until it's flush, mainly across these corners, and make sure all this stuff is is as flush as we can get it that'll make a lot cleaner truck when you're done one thing other thing I want to point out is you want to leave a gap in between this because that fenders the fenders are actually going to come up right in between there and get it to slide into place here so you probably wouldn't have a problem with this smallest strip but if you use any larger strip then you're going to have an issue with that so it looks like I came pretty close to that and then that'll actually Go up there and get screwed through for the spare tire mount and, and the actual fender mount. If you're going to do a spare tire delete, you, you don't even have to worry about this and you can actually cut this off. Uh, that's the way that truck over there is. Um, it actually doesn't have any of this piece right here. It's just the bar going across these two screws and it holds it pretty decent. So, one, two different ways to do it. Alright, if you made it this far into the video, you should have something that looks like this, which should be about as completed as the body work's going to get on this. Now all the rest of the parts are going to be finishing. We're going to show you where to cut on your window to make it fit in there. Little tips and tricks on that. Uh, back window, make it fit in better. Uh, and then we're going to modify the roof rack so that it fits in there. Very similar to stock. The only thing we've done on this roof rack is just cut off the end of it, so we're going to do that. We're also going to show you how to cut and bend the uh, back of the exo cage so that you can have that nice um, nice exo cage that comes down with the rest of the truck. So stick around for that, or if this is as far as you want to come with it, congratulations, you've made yourself a four-door truck. All right, so the windows. Windows are always a pain in the rear. Um, at the start of this video, I showed you how to remove them from the body so that you could do the uh, four-door conversion on it. Uh, now we're going to show you how to cut them up. Uh, when it's done, you should have something that looks about like this. Um, so we'll be cutting off all this top part down along here. And then on the back portion, you should have something that looks just about like this. 
remember we're saving this part so in the video this part as well as these so that way you can just screw your window right back into the body uh, back into the exo cage so let's put it on time lapse on that one thing I did want to mention if you're doing something similar to this so that you can have tinted windows these windows are tinted on my my personal truck um, that is an additional option that you can buy from Traxxas there couple dollars it's if you're going to build one of these and you don't want to put an interior in or something to that extent then definitely highly recommend um, putting tinted windows on worth the money All right, so now that we've trimmed down our windows, you should have something that looks like this. Uh, a couple things to note. I always trim off the edges here. You'll be trimming this flush with this window right here. And then on this side, I always trim up just a, just a hair over on this side. And then uh, the reason I ran, a, um, ran the blade over it first was uh, I find these things tend to crack if you, if you take too big a bite out of them with the... Uh, with the pliers or side cutters they will uh, they'll end up splintering so little small bites nibble it away this one's actually got a broken tip on it which somehow helps it I don't know how that works out but small bites and uh, just run this along and that way if it does crack it tries to follow that um, that line so but let's move on to uh, roof racks and uh, exo cages all right so there's three real ways you can do this you could leave it like stock um, you could actually uh, leave it so that the roof rack still comes all the way to the back. Um, you could just cut these tabs off here all the way around so that it's just that portion of it. Um, or you could go ahead and follow along as I'm going to show you how to modify these uh, the best way that I've found so that it drops down. Um, kind of match your truck bed a little bit better. So let's uh, let's knock these out after we cut this off. All right, so let's modify this roof rack real quick. I'm just gonna come right behind that second to last bar and cut right through it. Trim this up just a hair. Careful not to go too far. So that's done. Put that fit back in there. Perfect. 
Alright, so now on these, uh, to go from this to this, it's not super difficult, it can be a little bit tedious. Uh, you're going to find that you have two different kinds. They are different for either side. Uh, they are mirrored. One tab is centered. One tab is um, facing forward a little bit. So you're going to want to find that before you do anything of this mod. So that should be... So this one is going to be on our passenger side. So what, it doesn't matter though either way because... You'll look for this one that's offset, and you'll come up to this top corner, and you'll cut it off. So it should look like that. Now what we're going to do, is going to grab a butane torch or a lighter. I found this butane torch works best for me. Now you've got to be careful not to burn this material. It's, a, it's kind of a robust, funky polystyrene material, but we're going to... Just heat it up a little bit. I'm going to take a nice pair of pliers, and on this one, I'm going to bend it down. And go a little bit further forward. I'm going to bend it down, and it should fall naturally. Instead of a nice rise like this, we'll keep that bent down. So it's just to get a nice little curve on this part right here. Now the other one, we're going to come about a quarter inch back from this front, what is now our front bar. We're going to heat that up just a hair. Just until we can get it to, to bend. We're going to bend that. This one's a lot easier to bend down. So now we've got a We've got an angle of some sorts. Now, what we're going to do with this, make sure you can see this. We're going to just trim this up a hair and make sure it's flush. I'm going to come on the other side, and what we're looking for is we're looking for this vertical bar and this horizontal bar to be at 90 degrees. So that's how you get a nice angle on the rest of this truck. We want that to be at 90 degrees. Straight up, straight 90. So we're going to get it as close as we can with this. I usually like to bend it just a hair back. So this, there we go, we'll just trim it right there. And that's going to be pretty close. You'll find that if, if it's too long, It'll end up pushing this part back a little bit, and if it's too short, it'll pull it back. So you'll get weird little bends in the bottom horizontal bar. But that's looking pretty close. Um, so now the next step is going to be taking uh, some of this marine heat shrink. The reason we use this marine heat shrink um, is because it actually has adhesive inside of it. Of course, I also like to use this razor blade to scrape these this lettering off. Um, you have to work at it a little while to get it scraped off so it's not visible. But what we're going to do with that is we're going to cut it, and these little pieces are three and a half inch pieces. So we're going to cut that in half, or as close to it as we can get. Match it up so we get a little bit more to trim off this one. Won't be super noticeable, but you'll notice it. So that's pretty close. Now what we're going to do after we made sure that that's still at a 90 degrees and we've scraped off all these uh, letters. We're going to come in here, we're going to slide this almost all the way down to the end and we'll heat it up to where uh, that heat shrink will, will shrink and the adhesive will do its job and then uh, they end up, you end up with a pretty, pretty robust um, connection point on that. So you can do it a lot shorter. Some guys do it a lot shorter. Um, like I said, that to me, I like having the, the full length of the, the heat shrink on there. It, I think it helps it out a lot. So let's, uh, let's time lapse that.
All right, so now we've got our exo cage runners down to the bed. Uh, now what we're going to work on is shortening this roof rack that comes unassembled into something like this that will mount in its original location. Once again, don't have to do this. This is just purely for fun at this point. Alright, so for roof rack modification to fit the trucks we just built, uh, you can see they come pretty pretty badly worn from the factory depending on how they were packaged. But what we're going to be looking at doing is cutting out this these center bars all the way across. So I will time lapse that, but um, we're going to be assembling this with a soldering iron. Uh, you could do it with glue. However, I found that uh, that's the way they do it from the factory with a soldering iron or, or a, some, some sort of heated tip tool. Um, so that's the way we're going we're gonna to modify and assemble these.
All right, so that's all there is to it for the uh, roof rack portion. Uh, like I said, this is how they're assembled from the uh, factory for those plastic tabs, and that does make them pretty pretty sturdy as far as that goes. Um, and I actually assemble the uh, the runners in the same way. So what I'll do with these, uh, with that soldering iron, I'll come in here and I'll just lightly brush it along here. Uh, similar to what I did on this side to kind of clean it up. And I find that join, joins that joint a lot better than uh, like super glue or epoxy or something like that. Um, be careful with it. It's very easy to overdo that. However, a little bit of uh, scratching on the surface with that soldering iron, uh, you can build out of these uh, roof racks. You can build custom ones pretty easily. So, uh, But like I said, it is very easy to go overboard on that. So, uh, The next step we're going to move on to is uh, fenders. This is going to be super quick. Just a couple things to lightly trim. All right, on the fender setup, the only things you're going to be trimming is on this back portion. Uh, basically when you put this bed in here, uh, or rather cut this to make it a four door, um, you have to remove some of this, some of these tabs here. You'll still be able to screw it in because the mounting point's actually a lot lower. But basically what I'm going to come through, through and do is right at the top of this zip tie mount, we're just going to cut that off. And clean it up just a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing a little bit further back here. It's a lot easier to do when you're putting it on the table. There we are. Like I said, it doesn't matter so much where you cut it because the actual mounting point is further down than it sits on. You're just trying to get rid of that excess up top. So we'll do the last one here. And the final thing you're going to do is right back here, I'm going to trim off this top eighth of an inch or so. We can just run our blade across. And we'll clean that up a little bit. So the reason we do that is because underneath our truck bed when it sits in there, we want it to have plenty of clearance. So this is actually why we left that gap. Um, this is why we left that gap up there at the very top. So we want to have plenty of clearance for that. And then you can kind of see why I took off that top portion up here. And that goes all the way around. There we are. So now we don't have a clearance issue with that anymore. So, uh, and that'll still allow you to put your, your screw in or your spare tire deleter, however you want to do that. All right, if you made it this far in the video, you should have something that looks like this. Roof rack, exo cage, chop body. Man, that's looking sweet. Uh, we've showed you how to cut windows up, exo cages, fenders, and that's going to be pretty much it, short of paint. So... I do sell these on Etsy as well as uh, website DefenderCustoms.com. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you have any uh, issues with how this is done or uh, need some help on it, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments or uh, shoot me a message over on Facebook at Defender Customs. Uh, like I said, I do sell the, the kits ready for paint as well as uh, finished trucks. So thanks for watching and uh, stick around for uh, other videos here on the channel. Appreciate it.